The following video has been created without the use of AI and is written and narrated by me. Please support your human content creators by commenting and liking the video. Dark Day was awoken out of a painful sleep by the pain of his heavy body slapping on the ground. From one second to the next, he was wide awake looking around, ready to accept death from whoever freed him, but almost annoyed, he looked at his arms. He just slipped off. Turning his body, he looked at the pipes. His binds had been wrapped around off. Rust had finally managed to eat its way through the pipe, his body eventually becoming too heavy for it. What luck. The bigger body's toy placed a finger on his chin, thinking. There was zero chance he'd survive this entire situation. His arms felt so stiff, and everything below his hips was just gone, devoured. He was only kept alive by his mutated biology. Thanks to the beggar body's initiative. He could just lie here. Yeah. Perhaps this was a better idea. With a quiet thought, he lied down on his side. And yet, he couldn't close his eyes. His orbs stared down the dark, wet, moldy hallway. Every second his heartbeat increased. Just sleep. I'll find you. He thought. Perhaps not staring at the void would make him feel better. He painfully rolled on his other side, only to be met with a slight tube entrance. This wasn't any better especially knowing what was right behind him. Annoyed, he twisted the hand into a fist, hitting the ground. Fine, conscious. You want me to leave? I'll leave. I'll show you where this gets us. He thought, before rolling on his stomach, dragging his body forward. Taking hold of the red, hard plastic of the slide and shoving his body into it. He managed to contain the urge to shout, Woo! It was, after all, the most fun he had in years. But he slammed face first into the ground once the tube opened up, and the pain was enough to make him real. But faintly in the distance, he saw the exit sign. A heated breath escaped him. Slowly, desperately, Dog Day pulled his body forward until he stopped entirely. His hand was floating right above one of the little ones. It was sleeping. He almost hit it. It would have woken it up. Would have caused it to scream. He inhaled through his mouth. And as if possessed, he watched his own hand descend on the critter's mouth and nose. Instantly it awoke. It was thrashing, screaming into his fluff, but to no avail. No one would help it. No one could save it now. It took five minutes for it to finally stop struggling. And yet Dark Day kept pressing on its face. Harder and harder. As anger overtook him. Until... Crunch! The dog's right eye twitched. A thought came to him. 
the suggestion of an idea. And so he started dragging the little body behind himself. He carried it with him until he reached the exit door, which he opened by throwing his entire body against the knob. With a loud slap, he landed on the concrete of Playcare. With a haunted expression, he observed, but there was nothing, just silence. Placing the dead plush in front of the door for Catnap to see the moment he left the main building the next time, Dark Day began to make his way to the only exit of Playcare accessible to him. The gondola. After all, the elevator to below Playcare was definitely opposite of an exit. His stomach hurt. In fact, everything hurt. Every movement was pure agony. But if he could do this, if he could just reach a point of where he was no longer being chewed on, maybe even get to eat something. Anything. His body could heal just a tiny bit. His thick fingers took hold of the little hook that kept the gondola's door shut. The rusty little thing creaked and squeaked. But then the door opened. It screamed the sound of freedom and so Dog Day shoved his body onto his escape vehicle. Weakly he reached for the control panel pulling the lever forward as far as he could before crumbling into a pile of meat, breathing heavily. And despite all his pessimism, it actually began moving. Slowly, creaking, shaking, but moving. He breathed quickly and loud, tears wallowing in his eyes, rolling on his back. It wasn't over until his stomach was full of anything edible, but he climbed onto one of the gondola seats, watching his plaker become smaller and smaller. Dog Day was dizzy with joy. So dizzy, his body gave way, and he rolled back to the floor, closing his eyes in joy. He fell asleep almost immediately. The tiredness of weeks of no sleep finally overtaking him. Your ears were perked, breaths coming slow as you readied your body. It had been weeks since the cat dared to rampage through your camp, and this time you were ready. A final battle. If you died, surely it would be wounded enough that it would simply perish besides you. You were ready for this. You were relishing in the thought. So ready for this. A metal pipe sharpened into a fierce bayonet poked out of the stump of your right arm. Wooden spikes, barricades, built up as wall of death before the gondola's exit. The plastic of your left hand creaked as it gripped the floor tightly. The cat had cost you a leg too, and you still haven't quite figured out how to use the taped-on metal spike you used as a deadly prosthetic. So you knelt on your bad leg. Every muscle in your body was twitching with the delight of bloodshed. Originally you had been a Marion Melo doll, a series of 70s themed housewife dolls to directly compete with Hasbro's Barbie. The bigger bodies variant, aka you, was meant to be put into playcare eventually as the children's chef. But that never happened. You're still recovering in the labs from your surgeries, 
when the hour of joy happened. The sudden breakout of violence, the inability to escape and the ceaseless hunger combined with the post-surgery amnesia caused a violent psychopathy turning your once beautiful body that resembled a picture-perfect nuclear housewife to a horrifying gestalt that only cared about one thing and that was seeing the dawn of the next day. Preferably with a full belly. You had become a deadly predator, stalking the train tunnels of the upper floors of Playtime Co. Your once beautiful plastic face decorated with a white, almost smug smile was shattered completely. You could tell that you were meant to be fed a nutrient paste by the factory workers, but since the plants have gone tits up, you needed a mouth. And so you had torn, cut, and crunched at your face and head until the sound of tearing flesh, searing pain akin to being set on fire and spilling blood, staining the walls and floors of the factory. There were only sparse pieces of plastic left still on your face. Mostly on the back of your head which had short plastic hair. And a large chunk around your right facial side. The rest was free of the plastic. Revealing heavily scarred, skinless facial features that oozed blood almost constantly. It felt as if millions of needles were stabbing the exposed muscles every second. A great contributor to your broken mental state. But worst of all, was that you had lost your left eye in the process, as it was fully connected to the plastic fake eye of your fake face. And so you were forced to keep the plastic chunk on your right half, so you wouldn't go completely blind. But that was okay. You could feed now. The gondola came into view as you peeked over the barricade. Strange. The cart seemed empty. The cat barely fit into it. On shaking legs, you stood up. Standing there like a zombie, barely able to keep its balance, you awaited the ping of its arrival. And what followed upon it was surprising. Your fingers took hold of one of the wooden spikes as you leaned forward to ogle. No combat. No fight. No cat. Just a bloody orange sack spilling from the door. Carefully, like a spider, you climbed over your defenses, landing on the ground with a loud metallic clank, which caused the meat sack to awaken. It grunted, eyes glowing white, they peered at you. <sighs> what a horror, Doc Day said, and you tilted your head. His arms moved. He tried to climb back into the wagon, afraid of you, afraid of what you were. But with one quick swoop of your arm spike, it pierced the loose pelt on his lower half, nailing him in place. Scared, the dog rolled on his back, tearing his skin in the process to look at you. You crawled closer, hand stretched out, placing it into his mouth. You pulled his head forward, and you stared at him, analyzing him. And that's when a smell entered your nostrils. Your expression softened unnoticeably, though you could feel it. The pain, it was going away. Comfort, relaxation, 
You had all your muscles contracted and your heart rate increased. Meanwhile, Dark Day wondered how much humanity was still left in you. Clearly, you were one of the non-verbal toys, meaning you were driven by nothing but your basic instincts. And yet, your fortifications spoke of a high enough intellect that even after the loss of anything resembling a human, creativity for murder was definitely still there. He could see the lips of your bloodied mouth quiver. An indicator you weren't sure of what to do. Do you understand my speech, little angel of flesh? And then your functioning hand grabbed the pelt around his chest. He grunted. It hurt. You weren't gentle. And you began pulling him, dragging him. Slowly, almost pathetically. Your breaths were loud and quite haunting. Doc, they couldn't tell if you were going to butcher him or if you were bringing him to safety. But he had no strength to fight. Minutes passed and you pulled him through a metal door into a small room Judging by the text on it, it was a janitor's storeroom. It smelled faintly of bleach, though it was completely empty aside from a dirty mattress, on which you heaved him onto. The thing was dirty, but free of insects. And judging by the bloodstains, fresh and not, it was where you slept. Clever. Janitor closets like this were often ignored by predators, especially the prototype as it couldn't fit into them. This is comfortable, your home, he commented, and then... But why are you doing that? He stopped mid-sentence as he watched you pull at the bow that kept your dress together, as tattered as it was. Uh, I don't... In truth, your body had reacted to the vanilla. It was hot and bothered. Dark Dead's gas for children was a strong mood booster, the perfect chemical mixture to wake up from after catnaps lavender. But on adults, it was an unbelievably powerful aphrodisiac that he luckily was immune to. But not you. In other words, you wanted to feel any kind of naughty pleasure the moment your nostrils were filled with the faint traces of his yellow mist. It was your punishment as well as your pleasure for letting your guard down against one of the smiling critters. After all, you should have known better after your first encounter with Catnap and his nightmare gas. Dog Day was lifting his upper body up to stare at you as you exposed your destroyed body to him. It was a nightmarish parody of the female form. Joints that oozed blood, sinewy flesh pulsating beneath cracks, holes and seams, and the horrifying rusty metal spikes that shimmered in the barely functioning light of the room's light bulb. His eyes moved down your exposed figure. There was a plastic sheet clearly missing beneath your legs, revealing that the living corpse beneath all this plastic was indeed female. You swung your body onto Dark Day, thrusting your hips as you straddled him, causing the synapses in your brain to, f to fire. With a macabre cacophony that could be called pleasure. Dark Day tilted his head, 
He certainly enjoyed the view. It was probably the least horrifying thing he had seen in the last ten years. And at the same time, he lamented the missing parts of his body. But just because he was now incapable of enjoying this to the fullest, the thought of a companion, as beautifully fleshy as you were, it was too sweet to ignore. He placed one hand on your chest, squeezing and a growl or more a grunt escaped your oozing lips. You certainly are a strange one, <gasps> little flesh Indra. But I admit, <sighs> I'm quite excited. He cooed, his plush hand gently gliding down your body. The sensations of your countless wounds was overwhelming. You threw your head left to right, moving faster in response. <clears throat> you like that, don't you? Yeah. He grabbed your head, and for a moment you stopped moving. He pulled you down to his chest, your eyes widening at the sound of his heartbeat, feeling his warmth. And then a primal scream came from you as you felt his stubby fingers explore deep inside your wet caves. Such a wonderful, sinful feeling. My angel of flesh. <laughs> Are you squeezing my fingers very tightly? <sighs> Feels like someone's enjoying herself. Good, good. Let's enjoy this for as long as we can. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.